Okay, hi guys, welcome back to another video, and uh, this is Mindy's brake stroke bearing um, service, I suppose, because these are all consumable parts. Um, it's uh, raining, it's cold, I feel like shit, so it seems like the right thing to do to get out there in the cold and get dirty messing about with stuff like this, but I haven't got much time, so I'm going to have to do it. Um, Right, so what we got? We've got a set of new discs. These were ferociously expensive at £17 each. Um, I think that's about an eighth of what they are on the Merc for the rear, perhaps. Um, they're quite a lot smaller, yeah. Uh, I've got the Bintex brake pads, the uh, slightly uprated ones. Um, there is no difference in price, believe it or not, between these and the standard pads. So uh, I've had Mintex pads on bikes before and they've always been good. So I've gone with that. Uh, new spring pad retaining pin things. Um, locking tabs. New um, cotter pins new bolts and washers for the uh, um, bearing retainers um, I, I can't remember the proper technical na uh, names uh, I got some new bump stops because they were 95 pence uh, and if you see the ones that are on it you'll understand why um, I, I also got the anti-roll bar um, bushes they were also 95 pence um, I don't expect them to set the world on fire with their quality because they're 95p. But the ones that are on it before, if you remember in the last video, um, they were way too big. So whoever had the car before me has put some new bushes on it, which looks lovely. But the, the roll bar is just rolling around inside the hole because it's so big. Um, if you buy it as a package as well through where I got these from, you can get the clamps and the hardware for one pound extra although they have only sent me two bolts instead of four but you know I suppose beggars can't be choosers um, anti squeal shims these go on the back of the pads uh, somehow uh, and they stop the uh, the squealing noise um, so it should reduce how much copper grease I've got to put on it although I'll probably still put way too much on perfect um wheel bearing kits um but again handily i'm gonna have to get in touch with this company because it's the first time i've used them and they've only, one of the boxes of the bearings was open and the um seal kit was missing out of one of them so i haven't got time to faff about waiting for a um a replacement so i'm just going to hope that one of them's still okay um i'll check the quality of the bearings if one side is is still okay because the passenger side the near side one um doesn't have any play in it so i might just leave the bearings in that one um and i'll get in touch with the company and i'll get them to send me the replacement bit and then we can take it off and do that in future but we'll see um the way that the car is parked currently when i get it out that that will be the first side that we do um so we'll have a look and see what it's like um also got some new wheel studs as well because the old ones are pretty gnarled um and they they also don't they're not in straight so they actually sit funny at an angle like that and i think it's because the car had some really stupid mini light replicas on it um and I don't think they were quite the right size. And I think what they did is they actually just bent the bolts to get them to, to fit. So you put the Ross tiles on it and they don't quite line up. It goes on and it's safe, obviously, because I've driven it. Um, but then they're not, they're not quite lined up. So I'm going to put new studs on because they were fiver. Yeah, they were only cheap. So... We've got Mrs. Rusty Nuts behind the camera. She's not mic'd up because she's not very friendly and doesn't like people. So um, you can only hear my dulcet tones, I'm afraid. So, yeah, that's today's job. Weather looks pretty vile. Um, I'm 
really struggling to find the motivation to do this. But look, shiny parts. Look at these shiny parts. And that's my new powder coater, which you may not have seen the video for yet, but that's coming. Um, it's a fabulous piece of kit. I highly recommend it. Wait until you see it in action. Brilliant. Anyway, enough of shiny parts. Let's get it done. Okay, so first step was uh, was easy enough. Uh, the new, uh, not sponsored, but wish I was, Ryobi um, Ratchet. I can't remember what it was. Uh, two bolts, and there should be a retaining clip on the back of this, but looks like whoever did the brakes last time uh, let that part go on vacation. So... They're quite simple. These calipers loose now, but while it's in there, pull the pins. You have to flatten the pins off at the back. I love how easy these calipers are. He says while struggling with a pair of pliers. Pull the pins. Your retaining clip comes off, and then, in theory, he says, in theory, he says, in theory, yeah, they should come out. But we'll just make it easier for ourselves and move it away. Actually, the pads are not terrible. Um, they've got quite a bit of meat on them. And they have actually got the anti-squeal plates in. Unusually. It's great, this. This, uh, this car's got two piston calipers. Um, like you, you don't see that on uh, many classic cars. Um, very minimal play in that um, yeah you don't see that in many car classic cars but all you've got to do is push them back um, which should be quite straightforward because they're very clean and I say the owner that had this before me did all of the brake lines and calipers to put it back on the road after it had been six, uh, sat for 17 years so uh, it's pretty tidy. But that's how you take the pads out anyway. Um, next stage is to take these nuts out and then see what falls off, I guess. Um, and now it's raining really heavily, which is nice. Okay, so this is... Uh, I watched Hubnut wrestle with these before and watched... Uh, how easy people take them off with those, so. Vice Grip Garage, not affiliated. Quite funny, isn't it? Okay. Now in here amongst all of this grease and pleasantness, there should be a split pin. Uh, which there is. Just got to straighten that out on purpose. But anyway, yeah, we go. We'll clean the grease off this. Um, it's really difficult to see. We'll clean some of the grease off. Uh, get the split pin out. Undo this nut. Take the whole thing off, and then join you back in the garage. That uh, dust shield is held on with one bolt. Well, three, technically, because the caliper holds it on as well. But, yeah, that kind of screams powder coating territory, that, doesn't it? We get two of those in the oven. It's only a 20-minute turnaround. Looks like this grease nipple is blocked because all of the grease has just squirted out around it rather than into it. So I don't think this is actually getting any grease. So we'll have to probably just give that a clean out, see if we can free it up. 
But uh, the good news is, is there's no play in the kingpin at all. Components are all solid. Calipers are great, as I expected them to be, because they were new when the guy changed, well, new refurbed, um, when the guy recommissioned it back onto the road uh, a few years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, really complicated to push the pistons back in on these. You know, you just have to use some mole grips and a little bit of persuasion. <laughs> and the only problem is, is you've got to block one side because they move in pairs. But you get the idea. They're, they're not difficult to do. Um, so, yeah. Right. That's all of the old stuff. Out. Repair the coat of Give the hardware a clean. Uh, yeah, so not difficult to take one of these apart. Um, before I put the wheel back on, I'll give it a grease up. Because uh, at the end of the whale strip, she started to make a little bit of creaking. Um, so, yeah. Let's move into the garage now and get these built up. So, as you've seen in another video, this is still the video about the midget. Don't panic, I've got all the new parts here. But I've taken some of these components off. And because of this new toy that I've got, it's, it's raining. It's, uh, it's too good an opportunity to uh, pass making these look a little prettier. They're not in great condition anyway. Um, but give them a coat of powder coat will at least protect them for a few more years. Because they're 17 quid each, I mean, it's a massive expense. So, you know, anyway, let's get them covered. That's it. Right, so I've separated the disc from the hub, and I'll show you the hub in a minute. Um, the disc is not not very good. Um, it's quite a lot thinner than it should be. So the disc definitely need doing. The pads weren't too bad, but obviously you never use old pads on new discs. It's false economy. They were. 15 quid i think for the mintex ones yeah about 15 quid for the mintex ones so it's just not worth faffing about new discs new pads however the bearings i don't I don't know whether how well you'll see this but the bearings are like new um i've cleaned all of the grease off them they're absolutely mint there's no play in them they're rolling smooth. Same principle for the underneath, even the seal looks fresh. Um, so I'm not going to change them on this side. However, the nut was very loose. Um, now, I, I understand that there is no torque setting for these. Like on a modern car, you've got to torque them up to 8 million foot-pounds of torque and snap several 
tools doing it because for some reason the Germans think that's a good idea. Anyway, enough rant. Um, one of those would look good in here. No. Well, the wife says no for some reason. Just there, it'd be lovely. Oh. Anyway, um, that's one for you, John. Uh, yeah, so I don't think I'm going to swap them. Uh, and that's a good thing because um, the kit that's come off eBay, I thought it was from where I'd ordered everything else from, but it wasn't. These were from eBay because they were considerably cheaper. But they were probably considerably cheaper because most of the bits are missing. So I'll have a proper look at the other side. I have a feeling that when the guy who had it before me, he recommissioned the car after it had been sat for 17 years in a barn. Uh, literally, it was a barn find. Um, he recommissioned it by putting new brake lines, new calipers, new refurbed calipers. Um, I suspect he used the original discs looking at the wear on them. And this one's got a groove in it. Um, and that's on the floor. Um, but I suspect he probably did the wheel bearings at the same time because they look far too fresh to have been in there for, you know, the last 20 years. Because we've had it, what, three years now. So... Um, I'm going to leave them and I think we we might send those bearings back how much were they? about 20 quid 20, 25 quid or something like that so we might actually just keep them and uh, they're there ready for, the, for when they do need doing for the sake of 25 quid it's not worth the hassle is it? they are the same as the moggy yeah because I've still got a set for the moggy in there because the last one's snapped so I've got some spares and you know what I'm like with keeping spares. So I think we'll just keep them. So I'm going to leave the bearings in that. We'll grease it all up. New discs, um, new pads, new studs. I'll knock these studs out. I don't know whether you'll see these actually. But if you look at the... Try not to touch it. If you look at it, you can see that they're in at an angle. Can you see that? Yeah. So I'm going to put new studs in it. Hopefully that will make the Ross style sit a little bit better on there. Um, and uh, uh, new pads. I've got new nuts, washers, split pins, um, lock, uh, lock, pins, uh, lock washer for the um, caliper. But the caliper didn't have these in. So uh, I've gather it's not essential can't be because i've driven a lot on it but um we'll put them back in because that's how it's supposed to be and the timer for the oven has just gone off which means the backing plates are going to be uh, baked so let's go get them for those of you that haven't taken these out they require a special um, BMC tool, uh, around five pound. That's in weight, not in money. Um, some kind of way of supporting it uh, and gravity. That's it. Removed. Now, while I realise there is many ways to do this, um, like you can use the nut and bolt technique that Dave did in one of his videos, while it's out and you can get it in a vise and you use your special MG BMC tool, it's... just as simple to do that. So that's what I do. Okay, let's put them back together. New studs are in. Discs are here. Uh, I will put brake, brake cleaner on them before they go in the car. Don't panic. Right. So you just literally slide that on there. Line it up. Realise all the bolt holes are out of line and it's not the right disc. Shout a lot, swear, and then send them back. But in this instance, they're okay. So. <laughs> this is Rusty Nuts. has just got nuts behind the camera. I don't know whether you heard that. Um. No, these, these are okay. Fortunately, the uh, part numbers that Moss supply you uh, are really good. Um, 
the last uh, few bits that I've got for the Moggy has been much cheaper, like considerably cheaper from Moss Motors. Um, shockingly, because yeah, most Moss is usually quite expensive. Um, but all of these components were a fraction of the price from uh, MGOC, um, who I've not used before, but uh, have we used them before? Oh, okay, we have used them before. Uh, oh, okay, we have ordered components from. I have been corrected. So, uh, the oven is done, the powder coated components are complete, they are cooling down nicely. Um, I'm going to use this, it's turned down. Don't anybody have a heart attack? And then what we'll do is we'll find the torque setting in the Haynes manual, the Haynes book of lies, the Haynes what's the point in printing it, um, and uh, torque them up to the correct manufacturer's spec. Um, and then everything else is back out on the car. So as soon as the oven's cooled down, we'll get those components, we'll move ourselves back outside. We've got one of those to put on, one of those, one of those, one of those, one of those, two of those, one of those. That's it. I need to find a socket that's big enough for that. A um, little bit, I mean one for you connoisseurs out there. Uh, absolute sacrilege. These bolts that are in the centre here are metric. Just, I, I, I know, I know. I can. I, I'm just. I'm just about as hungry as you are. No, no, I don't care. Um, right, so we'll um, get it all cleaned up. Get some brake cleaner on these discs. Try and not handle them with my hands. Right, I've rewound the calipers using the uh, correct BMC tool. Um, now we're going to just grease it up while I can get to it. And uh, you absolutely don't need one of these. But if you've got a compressor, you absolutely need one of these. Yeah, I suspected that's blocked. So, I had a feeling um, that this nipple at the top here was blocked. So, I'll have to get one of those ordered and swap it out. Um, fortunately, you can access this when all of this is on. It's just easier when it isn't. So, I need to replace the top bleed, uh, the top grease nipple. Um, as it's completely blocked so right that's the powder coated bit it's it, yeah, I mean it's pretty much knackered this bit anyway but at least it's given it a little bit more life um, and it'll last for a few more years and then the next time we have to do um, pads and discs or just pads I'll get some more of these so although I'm not using the um, the new bearing set I will use the grease because obviously we're putting it back on um, on here again so I'm going to put a little bit on the shaft uh, and then the majority of it will go inside here obviously these bearings have already been packed all I've done is wipe the excess off so um, I'll just put a bit of fresh in there, wipe it off the seal obviously because you don't want it to cause an issue with the seal and then once we put it on the other way because I don't want to put the disc on the ground we'll put the majority in here 
still a little bit left in there which I'll sort as and when fresh grease mm. this stuff is a uh, special bearing grease um, and I guess that's why it's blue it's usually blue or red but then very carefully just obviously as the caliper goes in that back plate won't touch the back of the disc because that's what's making the noise um, so yeah nice fresh grease and then start to use some of the new parts or more of the new parts and a cleaned and refreshed part mm. special lot washer king nut castle nut king of castle nut right now i've I've not actually tightened that up to whatever spec it needs to be, but already there's no movement. So I think it was just loose. Maybe. Can't be sure for certain, but something uh, something definitely doesn't seem quite right. So um, I'm not going to uh, pinch that up just yet. We're going to rebuild the caliper and the bra bracket first. Uh, so to do that, we lift. You'll not be able to see much, I'm afraid, because my hands will be in the way. Um, that goes over there like so. Then that, then one of these. I say, and you're just going to have to take my word for it, and we'll photograph it afterwards, because... I just can't get my hands and the camera in the gap. And by the sounds of it, I can't get the caliper to go on either. Oh, there it goes. Okay, so that's the caliper back on. I've just got to fold over the lock washers. The bolts are torqued up to spec. Um, this front washer, there is a lot of conflicting information on the internet and there is no info in the Haynes manual as to what torque you do these up to. So I've concluded that there is no torque setting for these. I would suggest if it's anything like a lot of the older stuff, you pinch it up to the point where there's no play and then go back a little bit to the point where you can get your cotter pin in and I would suggest that that's fine um, you know don't take my word for it go get your own information but that's that's how I've concluded it so that is you know tight <laughs> I can't move that anymore there's no play side to side I could fucking anchor on it sorry I could anchor on it but I don't think there's any point. It was a lot looser than that before. I could actually undo this by hand. Um, and there's there's no play side to side. There's nothing on the, well, very little on the uh, on the lateral plane. So I think um, that's what I'm going with. Uh, but obviously for you guys, um, do your research make sure you're happy um, don't take my word for it you know I will not accept liability big dollop of grease so nice
<laughs> so yeah get your cotter pin in get it bent um we're gonna fill this with what's left of the grease it's uh, a very pretty color it's a nice blue that um and then you can replace your cover that's um bmc part number 777 um that's the bearing basically done obviously we haven't changed the bearings because there was no need to but if you had to um you obviously need to press them out uh, I don't think they're under a lot of force, not like a lot of the modern cars, um, but even so, just uh, be aware that you might need a tool to take them out. Um, I've got few bearing tools, but I don't think I've got the right one to do this even if I had, so I'd have to use a, uh, a hammer or my press. I've got a little DIY press, so that'd probably do it right next pads so the pads themselves the anti-squeal shims i guess they go in behind the pads they certainly seem to a little bit of copper slip you don't need to go mad with this stuff i've seen people go crazy with copper slip and you really don't need to uh, and now the wind starts so new pads in now you've got to put your um, spring retaining thing in the jig in then you put your pins behind that. Now, what I've found is that the, the pads keep rotating. So you have to push these pins in at an angle. It seems like a uh, bit of a pig, but there we go. Look, it does go in. They do go in. They're just a bit of a faff. Um, and then the same on the top. You want to give them a little bit of subtle persuasion. Some more than others. Oh, there we go. There we go. In. So now it should only be a case to just apply the brakes a couple of times just to put the pressure back on it and then the pad should then sit properly so we'll do that now before i put the pins out all right so that's the old one yep looks great that's the new one quite a bit different so we'll get this fitted now i do know that these are a pig to do because i did the ones on the rear and they're an absolute pain in the bottom. Um, but from what I understand, you just have to put a little bit of grease on them, put them under where they're supposed to be and let the weight of the spring come down. And it should, should pop into place. I'm gonna use the uh, correct rubber grease. You don't need to contact me in the in the comments saying that copper grease is not for rubber i'm aware i haven't got any okay and then just should be a case of slowly letting the pressure back on right bump stops back in now new ones up here turns out don't put your finger under there when you're trying to get it in 
because then we released the jack and it then crushed the finger between the two ouch that was really silly to do um yeah see if it swells up um okay so yeah that's all done now bearings on well the original bearings are re-greased new disc pads pins bent out the uh, lock washer behind is bent down um bolts are all torqued up things on i've got to do the uh, before i put the wheel on i'm not going to film this bit because you just can't get underneath and do it um i might stick it on time lapse um in fact i might be able to get the action camera in under there but one way or another uh, i'm going to do the uh, roll bar bushes while this side's up in the air then we'll get the wheel back on and this side is done i'm not going to film the other side because it's exactly the same pro process the only thing i'll film is if the bearings are shot on the other side um right done um there's now no play at all top to bottom so i think it just needed pinching up um i think what what happens is um He's obviously fitted it, the previous owner, put it all together, and then um, as it's heated up, maybe the bearings have moved. I'm not sure, but for whatever reason, it's uh, it's right now. So once I've done a few miles in it, I'll I'll check it again and make sure that they're still okay. Um, but it's got new discs and pads on it, which is what it should what it needed anyway. So two good jobs done. Uh, roll bar bushes is ch changed on this side uh, I'm going to do the other side uh, but it's exactly the same so you don't need to see that side so um, if uh, anything's wrong with that side I'll bring you in but otherwise uh, that'll be it and while I was under it I just noticed something hanging from the back so we're just going to check that now see what that is so you can come along for the journey uh, drop link for the shock absorber look has failed it's just completely sheared part part of company gone on vacation from the uh, uh, shock absorber so new drop links i think uh, i'm gonna just squeeze them back together for um storage purposes more than anything that'll be it's um it's obvious it's obviously can't go out like that because there's no suspension there's no shock absorber but um yeah i'll have to get some of those ordered fortunately that's just two bolts so it's a fairly straightforward job <coughs> just your modern mechanic